Welcome everyone. This video is an introduction to longlining and is an accompaniment to my Axwood Farm Library articles on longlining. This presentation is intended as a codex for beginning longlining. I hope it will give you an idea of what to look for. This lovely mare is a five-year-old Arab cross named Shikara. I bought her as a barely halterbroke project horse and used her for a magazine series on longlining, which was published in whole or in part in Dressage and CT Magazine and Practical Horsemen. The series was subsequently reprinted in the ADS publication, The Whip. Cindy Lee attended many clinics with me, taking pictures. Without Cindy's efforts, I would have few pictures to share with you. Most of the longlining pictures here are her work. The photo on the left is Cindy driving her saddlebred mare, Mimi, at an event in Nanaimo, B.C., Canada. The image on the right, for anyone who has longlined in the northwest in the spring, is self-explanatory. I got my first horse over 40 years ago, when I was 14. I started my education in 4-H riding English, Western, and Trail, then I discovered dressage. I love dressage. I learned so much about the importance of correct movement from my years studying dressage. After an industrial injury prevented me from anything but casual riding, I switched to driving. I still had dressage. I still had horses, and I was able to apply what I'd learned about dressage to my driving. I like the Hayfork picture because, when driving the pictured hazard, I couldn't figure out why Niki put her head in the air crossing the water into the hazard, until I got the photo from the photographer. She was looking right at the camera. She never missed a beat, but she saw something I was too focused to see. I discovered longlining after I started driving. The little Morgan mare shown on the previous page was from my pre-longlining days. It took me two years to turn her from a swayback western shuffle pony to an acceptable mover, though we never did get adequate lengthenings. I say acceptable because she got old before I got smart. What took two years to fix with hard work would have taken less than six months if I'd known how to longline. About a year after the Remlinger picture was taken, I took a longlining clinic from Jeff Ashton Moore, a California-based dressage rider, eventer, breeder of Dutch Warmbloods, judge and instructor of, among other things, vaulting. At that clinic, I learned longlining is the perfect progressive training tool. The very act of longlining, when done correctly, teaches the horse how to carry the bit and use their body correctly. Through my years of longlining, I've also learned it can be used to instill discipline, enhance fitness, provide a platform for evaluation, as well as a tool to improve or repair movement. Longlining gave me the tools to make sure I started with correct movement when I couldn't ride to achieve it. I learned I could teach a horse so much more by using longlining before any mounted work. The time I spent longlining also showed me I could achieve correct movement faster from the ground with the horse unencumbered by a rider's weight. This is Mindy Wallace's paint mare, Chocolate Chicky, at Ramtap in California, 2004. When I longline, my primary focus is on how a horse moves, because when the movement is correct, I know the technique is correct. What do you see when you look at this picture? Do you see a relaxed, forward, engaged, and attentive horse? To understand why I like this photo, you must first understand that horses are like cars. You may find that to be a strange analogy, but here's my logic. In a car, when you step briskly on the gas, the front of the car lifts. With a horse, it's the same. When the power comes from the rear, the front end lightens. Take a minute to examine this picture. Can you see his front left leg hasn't yet settled to the ground? It's almost there, but you can see it hasn't settled into the arena footing. Compare that to his right hind leg. It's already firmly planted and pushing. Because the front end is lifted, the front foot settles to the ground just a bit after the hind foot. This fellow is a lipazon. In longlining, the presence of the outside line in conjunction with the movement of the outside leg makes it an effective tool for improving movement. The outside leg against the outside line has a subtle effect which encourages engagement and self-carriage. It's like magic. Unlike lunging with side reins, longlining encourages improved self-carriage holistically. If you're patient, if you maintain proper contact, if you're patient, your horse, pony, or mule will improve in movement and self-carriage. You just have to put in the time. This is Kinnon, Leslie Shire Mare. Longlining is a very versatile tool. With longlining, you have supreme control and can minutely adjust and correct. With patience, you can teach self-carriage, engagement, balance, and impulsion. You can fix movement that isn't correct and use it as a tool to apply physical therapy to even out movement that's been compromised by injury. This is Echo, Dan L. Shearer's Arab Gelding. 
When Dan L. first started longlining Echo, you can see by this picture he had a jammed on neck and a cramped top line. He performed a western pleasure jog while dragging his back toes through the footing with the bottom of his neck pulled forward in resistance. With judicious use of Cavaletti and some steady work, Echo became a completely different horse, round, forward, engaged, and balanced. You can see the foreshadow of the change in this picture. The neck is no longer jammed on, his gut is tucked up, and he is no longer dragging his toes. Look how much more compression there is in the grounded hind leg and how much more flexibility there is in the hip and in-flight hind leg. By the time Danelle was done improving Echo, anyone who knew him before she started longlining him wouldn't have recognized him. Longlining is great for movement evaluation. Niki and I rolled over at Beaver Creek when she was 9 or 10. After the accident, I could tell there was something wrong. I just couldn't figure out what. She was no longer able to stay round, and round was something that Nikki did really well. If you look at this picture, you can see she's not coming through the back. She's dropped the base of her neck and isn't comfortable. After two adjustments by chiropractors to repair subluxated vertebra and an out-of-joint hip, there was still something wrong, and no chiropractor seemed to be able to find it. I put Nikki in long lines and was able to show Bob Lantis the movement anomaly that concerned me. He was able to find, diagnose, and fix the problem in her left shoulder because I could show him where I was seeing it in the movement. This picture was taken after Bob fixed the problem in her shoulder. Nikki's forward, round, engaged, lifting the base of her neck, balanced and bent. Look how far into her midline she's reaching with the inside hind leg. She's lifting her forehand. Without the ability to longline and show Bob exactly what I was seeing, I don't think I ever would have gotten her fixed and comfortable again. We competed at Intermediate at this Washington event. Our final event was Intermediate Single Horse at Shady Oaks in California that same year. We won our class there, but lost the division by one point to a pair of mules. The equipment needed for longlining is fairly simple. You will need a bridle. You will also need a bit that isn't too strong and won't pinch your horse's tongue or poke him in the roof of his mouth. My preference is a boche snaffle with added arch. The Boucher snaffle is a very mild bit which prevents the tongue from being pinched or squeezed. The bridle ring at the top keeps the bit in the correct orientation in the mouth regardless of rein pressure or head position. There is an article in the library on building this bit from a Mullen Pelham if you cannot readily find one or find the price objectionable. The article includes step-by-step -step instructions on adding additional arch. Pay close attention to the recommendation on the additional width needed for adding arch. Through this video, you will see many different horses wearing a variety of bits, like this little fellow, who is wearing a Mullen Pony Pelham. This cutie belongs to Kay. She long-lined him in preparation for driving. She owned a golf course and drove him on the golf course trails in Salem, Oregon. If you look closely, you'll see he has rings tied to his surcingle girth using baling twine. You will need a surcingle with multiple rings to accommodate the progression in physical development. As a horse learns to carry himself properly and gains strength to carry the forehand, the base of the neck lifts and the reins are raised. If the reins can be raised gradually as the horse develops engagement, he will be into overflex and light contact. If the reins aren't low enough at the beginning of the training, the horse will not be able to stretch his top line and learn to carry the bit and will not be able to learn how to use his back and reach for the bit. This is Champ, a retired eventer beginning a second career as a newbie's mount. Can you see he's dragging his back toes? Look at the dirt he has lifted into the air with his left hind foot. His new owner learned to longline so she could get him fit and sound enough without the added weight of a rider with the eventual goal of competing in nervous novice events. For longlining, I use a single continuous length of flat tubular nylon. This one inch wide line is light and slides easily across horsehair without burning. As kind as this line is to the horses, the same cannot be said for human hands, so make sure you wear gloves. Mountain tape is relatively inexpensive and can be purchased in many colors in an appropriate length for minis or horses. The snaps must be small enough to fit through the surcingle rings. This is Windy, a mule bred and owned by John Stratton, in the process of learning that listening is important. What you are seeing here is one of ver several very good reasons for using the bit I've shown you. If you're paying attention and know what you're doing, you can tie your horse in a knot to get a point across without causing damage. If you have a horse who's green or unruly that you expect to have to do this, wrap the bit in seal text. The goal is attentive, obedient, and forward, not hurt and scared.